What's going on everybody, it's Dilmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to grab and throw objects in virtual reality with various options available in the Interaction SDK, such as a one-hand grab, a two-hand grab, and various translate and scale constraints. And as a bonus, we're going to be modifying one of these objects to be able to throw them in virtual reality. We're gonna be using the hands and controller movement velocity by a component that is provided in the Interaction SDK that is going to allow us to make these throw interactions more realistic. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so I'm really excited for today's video where we're gonna be learning how to grab and throw objects. So the thing that I have right now, it's hand tracking with ISDK, grab and throw. It's just a very simple scene with basically just the environment that I show you at the bug area. Also has the full synthetic rig that we added on the previous video. And then right now the interactables game object, it's basically empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into prefabs and then stones and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop these prefabs in here. And they're gonna be fairly simple. They really don't have anything other than there's a visual scheme object underneath and then the actual mesh with the mesh collider and all of them are gonna be basically exactly the same thing. So when we want to interact with objects, we need to start thinking about what is it that we're going to be doing with the objects, right? There, there's multiple grab interactions that we can do. Some of them could constrain based on a translation. Some of them could be, basically we could constrain the scale. Some of them we wanna interact with two hands. Some of them we wanna do with one hand. So I'm gonna be covering a lot of that and some of them we could actually throw if we wanted to throw them. So hopefully by the end of this video, you know exactly how to implement all of those. So what we need to do is we need to start with the most foundation component, which is gonna be the grabable. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And this is gonna determine like how do we apply transformations to, to these objects. So whether we want to use one hand, whether we want to use two hands here on the, on the transformers, and then how those transformers actually manipulate these objects is what we're going to be deciding. So now that we have that, we're gonna be also adding a rigid body because every component that we're going to be grabbing needs a rigid body. In fact, I'm gonna just make it kinematic right now because at the end of the video, we're gonna be looking at how to throw them. So I'm gonna be changing a little bit about how these objects interact, but we're gonna be duplicating them so we don't lose what we have so far. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to think about, okay, now that we want to interact with this object, how is it that we're gonna be interacting? Well, in this case, I'm going to be adding, let's go ahead and expand this one. Leave that one expand, expand it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for hang one grab free transformer. And this is gonna be basically a transformer that we're gonna be able to move around. And there's really not gonna be any rules as far as how we want to interact with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this in here. And we have that one so far. The next one, I'm going to have a rule that we're only going to be translating the object a specific distance. So there's one component in there called the one grab translate transformer. And I'm gonna be dragging and dropping that into here so we have it associated. Let me do that again. And then I'm just gonna do control S to save it. And then this one, I just want to constrain it based on a rotation. So we can also use one for rotation, which is also called one grab rotate transformer and then we can drag it and drop it into this one and then so far so good right we have now three different transformers one of them is going to be basically a free move we can move it around one of them we can only you know translate it a specific axis if we wanted to designate some of those which we will and then this one is going to be whether we want to rotate it or not so now that we have that, you would think that we could manipulate, it. we can actually move these objects and we won't be able to. And let me show you, let me show you the results just by playing the scene. So right now we can see the hands just like we did on the previous video, but I can't really grab anything because all we have right now is just rules of how we're going to be able to grab these objects. So to be able to grab the objects, we need to add what's called a hand grab interactable. And the reason for that is because we have in here, if we go into the rig, if we go into the OVR interaction, if you remember, we have the OVR hands, we also have the OVR controller hands. And these are two components that one of them is gonna be for the controller, one of them is gonna be for the hand, but they're both gonna be hand handling and, and basically manipulating these objects with our hands. So what we need to do though, is we need to create an, another object in here inside of this, and you can do it on this same object. I just looked at some of the examples and how they did it, it's more organized if you do uh, a game object inside the, the parent. So this one is gonna be hand grab interactable. 
and then I'll just go ahead and put it in there. Make sure everything is currently set to, to 0, 0, 0. The other thing that I need to do as well is I'm going to go ahead and add the hand grab interactable. Make sure that it's added. And I'm going to go ahead and expand it. You're going to see that it has, it has a lot of stuff in here which we'll cover, some of them we won't cover. But just know that once we add it, it's going to have this object as the one, the pointable element, the element that is going to interact with the destination object. And then also the rigid body, it already knows that this object has a rigid body, so it is associated for us automatically. It also needs a physics grabbable. Well, in this case, I'm not going to add it yet, but we will add it so that we can throw the objects. And then also the supported grab types. So this is what we want to, you know, if we want to allow a pinch, if we want to allow a palm to be able to grab it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a pinch. I think that's more natural to be able to, to grab them. And then there's also hand poses in here, a movement provider, which again, we're going to need to, to be able to throw objects. Hand grab poses this is how the hand is going to adjust to the objects that we're trying to grab. Right now, I'm just going to leave it empty and then we'll just leave it like that so that I can show you what's happening. Then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, duplicate that and make sure that I put it at the same level of visuals. And I'll do the same thing on this one here. And just know that if you do it that way, it's going to have everything associated to the other objects. So just make sure you associate everything correctly to uh, the right object. So this one is going to be that object. And then this one is going to be that object. So just reassociating the components that matter. Let me do that again. That otherwise is going to be a snap into that. And we don't want that to happen. So now let's see if we can move some of these objects. Looks like I have a bug on this object. That's fine. And this one, I also have another bug. And let me see this one. It's fine. So this is because I duplicated that object. We want to make sure we don't do that. Let me go ahead and go back and fix what I did wrong. So if we look at this one here, this one should have the right object associated, which is that one. Oh, but it, but all, everything, the offset, that's what's it's basically causing the problem. So make sure that everything is zero, zero. And then make sure that everything is zero, zero because this is basically going to snap to the other objects. We don't want that to happen. Okay, we can see our hands. Let me see if I can grab. So I can grab this object, move it. And then this one, I can only rotate because that's what we told the, the component to do. This one is only translation, so it can't. It doesn't really rotate with my hand. This one, it's only doing rotation because we added a, a one grab rotate component. And this one was a free, kind of like a one grab free transform where we can move it around, we can rotate it. And this is going to be more likely the one that we're going to be using more. But if you notice though, when I grab it, it snaps to the pivot point. And we don't want that to happen. And the reason for that is because the hand pose doesn't know where we want to put the hands. So let's go ahead and fix it. Okay, so I'm going to start with the, the first one here. So let's go ahead and focus on this one. So remember, we have a, a hand grab interactable and we also have a pose that we can associate with. So if I, if I hit the plus symbol, you can see that it takes a hand grab pose. So I'm going to go ahead and create one of those. So I'm just going to say hand grab pose. And normally when you do that, it basically is going to try to do a hand pose by default. We'll cover that in a future video, but just know that that it's going to be where you can basically drag some of those points and move them around. Well, we're not going to do that on this video because I want to keep it simple. Instead, I'm going to do in here, there's a checkbox that says use it, uses hand pose. Let's go ahead and disable it. And then on this one, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And I'll just go ahead and select that. And then uncheck the use and pose. And I'll do the same thing on this other one. And we can go ahead and uncheck that. Okay, but so far we haven't really told it. We told it that this is relative to this object, but we haven't told it what surface this is going to be basically snapping to our hands. So if we go in here to the first one, what I'm going to do though is we can add another component here called the uh, it's actually a collider surface, collider grab surface. So if we were to select that one, you're going to see that now it asks for a collider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand this and select the mesh. So this is just telling the system that, yeah, we're going to have a, a collider for the grab component that is going to allow the hand to basically attach to each one of the surfaces. So on the, on the actual object. So if, the, if we have a vertices that is colliding to, it's going to allow us to grab it basically grab the object at those points. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that to the surface. And then we can do the same thing on this other one. I'm just going to do the same thing and then just drag it and drop it. Make sure that we associate the, the mesh and we can do that on the last one. And you're going to see that this is going to, now it's going to be looking a lot better than, than it did before. And I'll go ahead and expand this and then associate the collider. And then 
make sure that you don't forget this. I always forget this, so make sure you don't do because it's not gonna make any different. Add the, the hand grab pose to the hand grab poses on the hand grab interactable, that way he knows about it. Otherwise, what we did is it's just not gonna do anything. Let's go ahead and hit the plus symbol here, drag and drop it. And then on this one, we'll just do the same thing. I already hit plus, so it already has that element. So now if we grab the, this cube right here, you can see that now it doesn't snap to the middle, to the pivot point of the actual cube because we told it that we want to use that different surface. And you can see that if I grab it from the edge, it still works. Let's try this one right here as well. You can see I'm gonna grab it from the very, you know, from the corner and things are, it just feels more natural, right? This one as well, this one is a translate, so it doesn't rotate the object. It's just translating the object either in Z, X, or the Y axis. Okay, so let's add a couple of limits to some of these objects. Okay, so the first one that I want to modify though is the translate, right? So this one right now, it allows me to apply constraints. So I'm gonna say that the constraints are going to be relative because I want it to basically be relative to the position where the object is. And I'm gonna go ahead and enable the constraint on X and we can also do the minimum and the maximum. And then for the value on this one, I'm gonna do negative 0.15. This is gonna be the minimum X value that we're going to be allowing. And then on the positive side, I'm going to basically doing that. I'm also going to constrain the, the minimum Z and maximum Z. So we don't actually, we can really move it on a Z axis. It's gonna be basically lock on that axis. And then Y, we're gonna leave it, you know, freely. We're gonna be able to go up and down with that object. The other one that I'm also going to constrain is going to be this last one here. If you notice, we allow the object to be rotated on the on the up axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a constraint here. I'm gonna say, you know what? I only want to do negative 180, and I only want to do a maximum of, of 180. And the other thing that you can also do here, if you wanted to change this on a different axis, you can do that as well. In my case, it's sitting flat, so it makes sense to rotate it around. Okay, so let's try to grab this object here. I cannot move it, you know, far on the Z axis, it basically is log on Z. And it's only going up to, you know, 0.15 on the right, and then negative 15 on the X axis. So basically I have a log, but I can go up and down as much as I want. And so that works. How about the actual rotation here? Let's see, we can do negative 180, and I can also do only up to 180. So this is all working. And obviously this one, we can do anything we want because we haven't really done anything with this. The other thing that I can also do is if I wanted to resize it, I, well, in this case, I haven't added a two hand grab transformer, but if you wanted to move it around, like in this case, I can, it basically locks when I try to use both of my hands. And the reason for that is because we haven't told the system that we want, we want to use a second hand for actual grabbing these objects. If we go back into the stone cube, you can see that there's a component in here that we can add for the two grab transformer. What we can do is we can just do a two grab and you're gonna see that there's three different options. One of them is gonna be for basically a free, this is gonna allow us to resize it and rotate it around with, with two, different, uh, two different hands and also move it around. And this one is gonna be on a plane, this one is going to be during rotation. I'm gonna do the free one and I'm gonna drag and drop this component so it's associated with it. I'm also going to constrain the scale so I'm gonna set this to be relative to the initial scale. We can just check that. Also the minimum and maximum, I'm gonna constrain it and I set the maximum to be a max scale of two. And we can do the same thing here on this other object where we don't want to only do it with one hand, we wanna do it with two hands. So let's go ahead and collapse this. And then in this case, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to also do a rotation. So we can do a rotation with two hands. So let's go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna drag and drop this component here. And in this case, I'm gonna do right on the rotation axis and we don't really have to have a minimum angle and a maximum angle we can just leave it like that all right let's try this and see if we can now interact with two hands on this one so if i wanted to make it bigger i can make it bigger i can go small i can also rotate it as i'm using my two hands it's going to make it a little tiny here and then i'll just try drag it around and, and move it around i can make it bigger again and then just basically put it aside and this one i can also interact with two hands so you guys can see as I'm getting closer, it allows me to, to rotate it. Can also keep moving it around, let's try that again. And you guys can see how it doesn't really, it, it acts a little bit strange when you do the rotation, but it is constraining it. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna do though, that I think it's going to be pretty cool, it's going to be actually throwing objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these objects here. 
Uh, we can probably put him about 3.5, 3.4. I think 3.5 it's going to be just fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one here. And we're going to call it throw. This is going to be the object that we're going to be throwing around. I'm going to make it maybe a little bit smaller. So I'll go here to my visuals. And then we can make it about, I think one is fine. And we can go ahead and just focus here. And now that we want to throw this object, it doesn't really need to be right on the flat surface. We can, because it's, it's going to be using the rigid body. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it no kinematic so that it falls with gravity. The other thing that I also need to do though, if we want to basically interact with this object with physics, we need to add another component. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these. And then normally I like to have this guy at the very bottom. And if not, we can just leave it there, just move it. And then we can move it here and then move it. There we go, so we have the core components on the very top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new, a new component called the physics grabbable. And it's gonna be taking a stone cube throw, which in this case is the gravel component. And also it's going to be taking the rigid body, which is going to be this component. The other thing that we also need to do is we need to tell it what the physics grabbable is going to be. So that component, it's added to the parent. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it here. It also going to need more information to be able to throw this object. So we're gonna to need to make some changes here on the actual controller hands and also the OVR hands. So what I'm gonna do, there is a component here under Oculus, and if we go down to runtime and then prefab, there's going to be something called the control controller velocity calculator. This one it's going to work if you have a controller, a specific feature, which I show you on the previous video. In my case, we're using hands for both. So we're gonna be adding the hand velocity calculator. So we're gonna need it for each hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this and expand this. Also do the same thing on left and right hand. So I'm gonna drag it and drop it maybe right here at the end. Do that as well for the right controller hand. And then let's do that as well for this component and also this component. So now if we go into the first one on the left, on the left controller hand, it's gonna ask us which hand we're gonna be using that on. So I'm just gonna do associate that. Make sure that I do the hand. Let me do that one more time. And then I do the same thing here on this component, just associate it with the hand. And this basically just calculates the velocity. It's really, really cool because when you're using the, the actual interactables, it allows you to basically calculate the velocity and apply that to the object that you are interacting with. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this component here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be for the left hand. And then lastly, this one is going to be for the right hand. Make sure that you do the right hand. And if we go into the actual interactable though, which is gonna be the one that we're using, it's also going to be required that you pass in the velocity calculator, which we just added. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it there and do the same thing with this other interactor. Just drag it and drop it there. And then also with the controller ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone it multiple times. Let me see if I can throw it and everything it's, let me throw it at that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw it. Let me throw it harder. There we go. Let me see, throw it much harder. And then, so yeah, I can throw objects. I mean, this is not the coolest thing ever because I probably could change the gravity on the rigid body and, and change and make a couple of changes to make sure that we can throw it even harder than this. But the fact that it's taking the velocity from my hand, it's pretty cool. And I can just, you know, aim at different objects. Maybe I'll just aim at this one, this is close. We can grab that one, Let's get that one back and then see. There we go. So this is working, we can grab items, we can throw different items. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up and say that this is everything that I wanted to show you today. Also be sure to stay tuned because the next video is going to be on how to interact with objects at a distance. So we're going to be adding the distance grab interactables that are currently available. And if you guys have any other questions about these today, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.